Jomo Kenyatta International Airport IATA, NBO, ICAO, HKJK, is an international airport in Nairobi, the capital of and largest city in Kenya. Located in the Embakasi suburb 15 km 9 miles southeast of Nairobi's central business district, the airport has scheduled flights to destinations in over 50 countries. The airport is named after Jomo Kenyatta, Kenya's first president and prime minister. The airport served over 7 million passengers in 2016, making it the seventh busiest airport in passenger traffic on the continent. History Topic: 1950s and 1960s Plans for the airport were drawn up in 1953, work started in January 1954, and by mid-1957 it was found possible to bring the operational date forward to mid-March 1958. The task was by no means straightforward, and many problems—largely of a civil engineering nature—had to be overcome before the runway could be built. The site chosen, on a great lava plain, is a pilot's and a controller's dream, 11 miles from the center of Nairobi the city's two other airports, Eastleigh and Nairobi West, are closer, its approaches are free from any obstruction for at least 17 miles in any direction. The nearest mountain, high ground, would be a misnomer when Mbakasi itself is 5,327 feet AMSL is 25 miles away, and 10 DEG off the runway center line. Visibility rarely falls below this obstruction distance in the clear air of the plains, and it may have been possible to see the summit of Mount Meru in northern Tanganyika, about 140 miles away, both Kilimanjaro away and Mount Kenya could be clearly seen. On Sunday, 9 March 1958, Mbakasi Airport now JKIA was opened by the last colonial governor of Kenya, Sir Evelyn Baring. The airport was due to be opened by Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, however, she was delayed in Australia due to an engine failure on her Qantas Lockheed Super Constellation aircraft. Due to this, the Queen was unable to attend the ceremony. The 10,000 feet runway at the then Embakasi Airport was a big improvement on Eastleigh's 7,980 feet Murram runway, which in the rainy months was unsuitable for Britannia's. The runway was 10,000 feet long between thresholds, and was sighted roughly 06 24. The 06 approach was used on 90% of all occasions. A basic strip 10,800 feet long and 500 feet wide was prepared for the 150 feet wide runway. There were 25 feet shoulders each side, and consequently 150 feet run-offs beyond the shoulders. After cambering, weak spots were reset, and finally paving machinery was used to lay the asphalt surface. The result was an engineering success of which the contractors were very proud, so accurate was the cambering that the wet surface of the runway dried out evenly on each side of the center line. Physically, the great care taken in the engineering resulted in a load classification number of 100 being achieved. The surface at the time was strong enough to accept the Boeing 707 at maximum gross weight, although 15,000 feet rather than 10,000 feet length was the probable all-weather length requirement. There was no physical limit to extending the paved length to this figure, but more definite plans for the operation of the big jets into Kenya was required before such an increase was contemplated. At the time in 1958, Nairobi was one of the few towns in the world that could boast of a 1965 airport with an expansion option at hand. The number of aircraft movements then was less than 600 in a month. The airport architect was strongly influenced by the design of Cloton, Zurich, in the planning and design of Embakasi, although similarities were by no means obvious. Both airports are arranged so that arrival passengers can see completely through the building, the minimum of signs is required. And although Embakasi was designed to meet Nairobi's particular needs, both airports shared a lightness and spaciousness that was at the time extraordinarily refreshing. The fitting and color schemes employed at the then Embakasi airport were absolutely first class. Topic. 1970s, 1980s and 1990s 
In 1972, the World Bank approved funds for further expansion of the airport, including a new international and domestic passenger terminal building, the airport's first dedicated cargo and freight terminal, new taxiways, associated aprons, internal roads, car parks, police and fire stations, a state pavilion, airfield androadway lighting, fire hydrant system, water, electrical, telecommunications and sewage systems, a dual carriageway passenger access road, security, drainage and the building of the main access road to the airport, airport South road. The total cost of the project was over $29 million $111.8 million in 2013 dollars. On 14 March 1978, construction of the current terminal building was completed on the other side of the airport's single runway and opened by President Kenyatta. The airport was again renamed, this time in honor of President Kenyatta after his death about five months later on the 22nd of August 1978. In October 1993, a British Airways Concorde landed at the airport for purposes of testing the aircraft's performance at high altitude. Topic: 2000 to date. On 10 June 2008, Kenya Vision 2030 was launched by President Mwai Kabaki. Under the vision, JKIA's aging infrastructure was to be upgraded to world-class standards. New terminals and runway were to be added in phases. The African Development Bank carried out an environmental impact assessment on the development of Phase 1 of the proposed Green Field Terminal GFT, which was expected to increase the capacity of JKIA to about 18.5 million passengers annually by the year 2030. The Greenfield Terminal project was to encompass the construction of a four-level terminal building comprising a central processing area, a transit hotel, landside retail centers, arrivals and departures plaza. Ancillary facilities which would have included an access road, car parking, access taxiways, ground service equipment GSE, and bus parking areas. On 29 March 2016, the 56 billion Kenyan shillings million United States dollars Greenfield Terminal Project was terminated by Kenya Airports Authority because the contractor failed to secure funds thus ending Kenya's dream of having the largest terminal in Africa. It however remains to be seen whether future administrations like the Grand Coalition Government of 2008-2013 will reactivate the project which is necessary for Nairobi and Kenya's future aviation needs in the 2020s, 2030s and beyond. It also remains to be seen whether the new CA Managing Director Johnny Anderson who was appointed in mid-2016 will have a vision for the airport beyond the 2030s. In February 2017, the airport was awarded a Category 1 status by the Federal Aviation Administration of the United States, thus allowing possible direct flights between the U.S. and Nairobi. Five other African countries have direct flights to the U.S. South Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, Morocco, and Cabo Verde. In April 2017, the U.S. Department of Transportation granted Air Namibia a license to fly to the U.S., making it the sixth African country to be permitted to operate this route. Facilities Terminals There are two terminals. Terminal 1 is arranged in a semicircular orientation and is divided into four parts, 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1E are used for international arrivals and departures while Terminal 1D is used for domestic departures and arrivals. Terminal 2 is used by low-cost carriers. The original terminal, located on the north side of the runway, is used by the Kenya Air Force and is sometimes referred as Old Embakasi Airport. Figures from CA indicate that the airport's Terminal 1A has a capacity of 2.5 million passengers. The Kenyan government is targeting over 25 million passengers annually by 2025 on the expansion of JKIA's terminals. In 2016, JKIA accounted for more than 70% of overall passenger traffic in the country. It also had over 7 million passengers pass through it. Domestic travelers through the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport JKIA made up 40% cent of overall passengers in 2016. This is an increase from 32% five years prior 2012. 
Topic Terminal 1A International Departures Terminal 1A has a capacity of 2.5 million passengers a year and three levels, 30 check-in counters, 12 departure gates, ample seating and food and retail options. The arrivals area houses five baggage carousels, handling up to 640 bags per hour. Topic. Terminal 1B International Departures Terminal 1B houses common use check in counters, with security checkpoints leading to the departure lounge on level 1. Topic. Terminal 1C International Departures This terminal houses common use check in counters, with security checkpoints leading to the departure lounge on level 1. Terminal 1D Domestic flights Serves domestic flights Topic Terminal 1E International Arrivals Following the closure of the main international arrivals and departures terminal after a fire, a parking facility was converted into the temporary international arrivals terminal. Note, remodeling and extending Terminals 1B, 1C and 1D is scheduled for 2017, after which JKIA is predicted to be able to handle 12M passengers. Topic terminal 2 Low-cost carriers serves mainly low-cost carrier airlines LCCs. The prefabricated terminal opened in April 2015 with a capacity of 2.5 M passengers, originally intended to relieve overcrowding. Terminal 2 houses 50 international and 10 domestic check-in desks, 32 contact and 8 remote gates, an apron with 45 stands and linking taxiways. Current lounges at Terminal 2 include the Mara Lounge and Mount Kenya Lounge, both at airside, level 1 and open 24 hours. Topic Kenya Airways Lounges, Simba and Pride Lounges, and other lounges. In January 2015, the Simba Lounge and Pride Lounge which are situated on the second floor of Terminal 1A were open. These two terminals capture the spirit of modern Africa and offer guests refreshing spaces in which to refresh, relax, conduct business, eat and enjoy world-class amenities. The two facilities, with a combined capacity of 350 people, were developed at a cost of 135 million Kenyan shillings $1.35 million, and are for the use of KQ's Premier World and SkyTeam's Sky Priority passengers. The Simba Lounge is set aside for first-class passengers. Its interiors celebrate the richness and beauty of unique elements of Pan-African culture and heritage in a contemporary setting, using a palette of carefully selected local artworks, materials, artifacts and textiles. The lounge represents a world-class experience carefully planned with appropriate amenities, for example, an exclusive smoking zone, an enclosed VIP sitting area and baby changing units. Just as the village elders sat in a circle and shared a traditional beverage and discussed matters, the lounge's focal feature is its central circular banquet seating, where guests from different backgrounds can meet and converse. The Pride Lounge features a circular layout overlooking the airside runways, and provides a separate cigar room, washrooms and showers, a kiddie zone and a dining, working area. The Simba Lounge hosts a family lounge, business experience center, washrooms and showers, a noise-proof quiet zone for sleeping, a dining, working area and a separate smoking zone. There is also a Turkish Airlines TAV Lounge T1B, as well as the Swissport Aspire Lounge T1C. Both are regular lounges, which can be accessed by elite status or a paid pass. Topic. Second runway. In January 2017, a new instrument landing system equipped runway 5,500 meters feet in length was approved for construction at a cost of 37 billion Kenyan shillings shillings approximately 370 million United States dollars. According to KAA's managing director John Anderson, construction of the new runway which will be bigger than the existing one will begin this year 2017. It will also double aircraft movement from 25 to 45 per hours. The new runway will be a Category 2 runway and will complement the older runway built in the 1970s. The proposed design of the project is a 4.8 km long and 75 m wide runway. 
The current runway is 60 meters wide and 4.2 kilometers long. This is an ICAO Code F which can handle the new generation wide-bodied aircraft like the Airbus A380 and the Boeing 747-8. The new runway will have fog lights, currently the present runway is only lit at the sides. The runway will also enable long-haul flights to destinations like New York City carrying up to 32 tons of passengers and cargo. Airlines and destinations Passenger Cargo Other facilities Ameka, a restaurant offering authentic Kenyan and African cuisine has its store in Terminal 1A Level 2. American fast food chain Hardee's has an outlet at JKIA Terminal 1A. African Express Airways has its head office on the airport property. The Kenya Airports Authority also has its head office at the airport. Access. The main entrance to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is on Airport South Road, which can be accessed by an exit from the A109 Highway Mombasa Road. Passengers can also travel to and from the airport via city bus route number 34 or taxi. Aircraft accidents and incidents On 20 November 1974, Lufthansa Flight 540, a Lufthansa Boeing 747-130 DABYB, LH-540, Hessen, German state, delivered 1970, crashed on takeoff from runway 24 in Nairobi killing 59 of the 157 on board. The aircraft was on a flight from Frankfurt to Nairobi then Johannesburg. This was the first fatal accident and third hull loss of a Boeing 747. On 17 May 1989, a Boeing 707-330B operated by Somali Airlines aborted takeoff and then overran the wet runway and crashed into a rice field. The plane had 70 passengers and crew on board, but no fatalities resulted. The airplane was damaged beyond repair. On 4 December 1990, a Boeing 707-321 sea freighter operated by Sudania Air Cargo struck an electricity pole 5 km miles short of runway 06 and crashed in flames. Visibility was 500 meters 1, feet in fog with a 30 meters 98 feet cloud base. All 10 persons on board died. The airplane was damaged beyond repair. On 6 June 2012, Egyptair Flight 849, an Airbus A320, blew a tire while landing and veered off runway 06. Portions of the aircraft obstructed the runway, necessitating closure of the airport. Inbound flights were diverted to other airports in Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. None of the 123 passengers and crew was injured. On 5 August 2013, an airlock in the main pipeline that delivers jet fuel to the airport caused all inbound flights to the airport to be diverted to other airfields. Approximately 1,000 passengers were placed in overnight accommodations, and the fault was fixed the next morning. On 4 January 2015, a Fokker 50 carrying six people crashed after a landing gear failure. Of the six on board, no injuries were reported. Jomo Kenyatta Airport was temporarily closed and all flights were diverted to Mwa International Airport, Mombasa. Topic: 2013 fire. On the 7th of August 2013, a fire originating in the immigration area caused massive damage to the airport and forced it to suspend operations temporarily. Unit 3, usually dedicated to domestic operations, was used temporarily for international traffic. 
The worst fire in the airport's history occurred on the 15th anniversary of the 1998 United States Embassy bombings in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, but no connection was immediately obvious and no terrorist group has claimed responsibility. The cause is not believed to be intentional, as no explosive devices were discovered during the initial investigation. According to Kenyan officials, firefighting efforts were hampered by some of the first responders choosing to loot the airport instead of fighting the blaze. International arrivals had been bused to a temporary facility set up in the ground floor of the new parkade until the reconstruction of the damaged areas. In June 2015, a new, fully functional temporary terminal building became operational. This terminal building was planned for a design life of 10 years, until completion of the planned new permanent facility. Sky Aero launched flights to Kisumu and Mombasa in May 2014 but ceased operations a few months later. <laughs> 